Alright guys, this is the third video of the Maya Tank Rig tutorial series. Uh, just to recap what we did in the last video, we set up our wheels so they rotated correctly with our drive control. We also set up the wheels to rotate in opposite directions when we steered our drive control. And then we took our tread set up and we connected them. So everything works together. So hopefully you have a Maya scene that looks just like this with your wheels and treads moving together. If so, you can go ahead and move on to the next part, which is the hull. So unhide the group. So we're going to create six empty groups. And you can do that by going to create empty group. And we're going to name them tank, geometry, rig, clusters, curves, and tread up object. And tank is going to be our main group. And we can go ahead and parent tread up object, curves, and clusters to our rig group. Parent the geometry group to the tank group. And the rig group to the tank group. Now we have a node structure that we're going to use to keep our scene clean and make working a little easier. So parent the mesh from the previous videos into the geometry group, root joint, so our entire skeleton needs to go into the tank group as well, and the drive control also in the tank group. And inside the drive control, we have our curves and locators from our first video. We can go ahead and parent the curve paths to the curve group and our locator up objects into the tread up object group. We want to keep the relationship between our tread up object locators and the drive control. So we're just going to grab our drive control and the tread up object group and parent constrain them, maintaining the offset. We also need the curves to move with our drive control, but we're going to be using clusters in a moment. So we don't actually need to constrain anything there. Next thing we're going to do is create a hull joint. Now this joint is going to be Z or Z forward just like every other joint. You're going to name it and you're going to position it in the center of your hull. Grab the hull mesh and skin them. And now you can parent the hull mesh to the geometry group and parent the hull joint to the base joint. It's going to move it up. Next thing, create some form of a hull control. Again, I just used a curve and drew a shape. Freeze all the transforms and make sure your center matches the exact position and orientation as your hull joint. And then use an orient constraint to connect our hull joint to the hull control. And then we're going to parent the hull control to the drive control. And now set up a few limitations on our hull control. Now we don't want to ever rotate it on this axis because it will just twist up the treads and we are also never going to move it anywhere. So we can go ahead and select the attributes that we're not going to use, lock them and hide them. And last thing we're going to do on this control is limit our rotations because we don't want to rotate too far and crash through our treads. So go to attribute editor, limit information under rotate and just set a five degree limit on either side. So negative five and positive five on the other side. And that's a 10 degrees of freedom for each of those axes, which doesn't sound like much, but it actually goes a long way. Uh, moving on to the wheels, each one of them is just a drawn curve control is all I use. But again, you can use whatever you want. The main thing you need to worry about is the center point of your controls you need to be directly under the wheels and not under the control. That is really important because these controls are going to be used to attach to a ground plane that's uneven so that your wheels conform to the mesh. And if your center point is under the control and there happens to be a bump kind of under the wheel and then stopped here, the control would still be flat and the wheel would just go straight through the bump. So you want to just make sure that your center point is below the wheel. Once you've created all those, name them and number them corresponding to each of your joint wheel names and duplicate them for the other side and then parent those to your drive control. Make sure the transforms are frozen as well. 
and I'm also going to limit the attributes on these controls so we can take all these other attributes away. Just going to lock them and hide them. Now we're going to set up our clusters so we can hide our geometry, we can hide our drive control and our tread object we don't need right now. And we want to create a cluster for every wheel. These points here are going to be a cluster for this wheel. So I'm going to hit create deformers cluster and make sure relative is turned off and hit apply. And we're going to name this left wheel cluster 01 then create a cluster for the next wheel and name it. Then keep doing this for each wheel. And then the remaining points on your curve, you're going to create one last cluster. I'm going to call that left hull cluster. On the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Create a cluster for each wheel. I'm just going to name them. And also a cluster for all the remaining points. Call that right hull cluster. All of our clusters are now complete. We're going to parent those to our clusters group. Parent constraint our clusters group to our drive control. So we're going to select our drive control, our cluster group, constrain parent, and then just hit apply. We're also going to parent constraint the hull cluster groups to the hull control. So select the hull control and each of those hull clusters and constrain those. And now we're going to constrain each of the wheel clusters to their corresponding wheel control. So select a wheel control and the closest cluster and we're going to use a point constraint and we want to maintain the offset and also use only the y axis. Hit apply. We're going to do this for every wheel and wheel cluster. So there's one side and then we're going to do the other side. There we go unhide our geometry. We can hide our clusters now, we're not going to need those. When we drive our tank, everything should move as it was before. And then we have our wheels set up and a hull control working. Obviously we haven't set up the wheels yet, but that's what's coming next. We can go ahead and delete that hull group. Alright, if we unhide the joints, we're going to select all of our gear joints and parent those to our hull joint. Now our gears and our treads are moving. Everything's almost there, except we have our tread slipping, which isn't what we want. So to fix that, we need to go into the node editor and select a gear joint from either side and the hull joint. Frame those. You'll recognize this from the previous video. We're going to create a new multiply divide node. So utilities multiply divide. I'm going to rename this to hull multiply divide. We're going to pop a value in here. I wonder if you can guess what that value will be. It is our magic number we calculated in the last video, but we need to make this a negative. Next thing we're going to do is plug in our rotation from our hull joint, the rotation X. So rotate X from our hull joint into input 2X. Now we need to add this rotation to our wheels overall rotation, right? So the output X just gets added with the input 1D2. And the same for the other side. So now if we try this, the tread is moving correctly and the gears are moving correctly, but we have the wheels moving as well. And that doesn't make any sense because we have the tread nice and stationary. So to fix this, we have to separate our gears and wheels. So this setup here, this node setup drives our right side wheels and this drives our left side wheels. All we need to do is create a duplicate set of nodes that will drive the gears. So let's duplicate the left side first. We use the multiply divide node and I'm just going to call this left gear multiply divide and we'll duplicate the left plus minus as well, gear. Now we're going to mimic this entire connection setup. So we're going to take the output and plug that into our 2x. Now we're going to connect our drive control, drive attribute into our input 1d0, which is the same thing that we have in this one. 
and then our second connection in comes directly from our output x from here there we go hoping this makes sense and our third connection which is our new hull multiply divide node we don't actually want this to affect our wheels anymore we want it to affect our gears only so we can go ahead and delete these connections into the wheels right and plug the output x into the third slot here which is input 1d2 now we need to do the same thing for the other side so we're going to duplicate the multiply divide and the plus minus average i'm going to rename these i'm going to rename them to gear and mimic the whole connection setup so again this unit conversion node the output plugs right into our input 2x and our drive control drive attribute goes into our first slot in the plus minus average the multiply divide node goes into the second slot the output 1x into input 1d1 and our whole multiply divide node the output x needs to go into our third slot which is input 1d2 now these are set up to be connected to our gears so we've got our gear joint here and another gear joint there we're going to add the other two gear joints so we have one and two we're just going to add those gear joint one and two and we want to make sure you get these plugged into the right gears so we'll start with this one the right output 1d and this is going to overwrite our wheel connections it's just going to automatically disconnect it for us we're going to rotate x and we get this unit conversion node and we can output that directly into the next gear so our right side is set up now our left side output 1d plug that into our rotation x and our unit conversion node we can just plug the output of that into the other gear rotate x all right so now when we uh, rotate the hull control we can see that the gears and the wheels are now separate but because our treads are driven by our wheels, our treads aren't actually responding. So what we need to do now is just disconnect our treads and connect them to our gear setup. So to do that, we can just select our tread up objects and a gear joint from either side and frame those. And you'll see here that we have our tread multiply divide that we set up in the first video and they are being driven by our wheel plus minus average nodes we just need to switch those over to the gears so we're going to take the output 1d from the gear and plug that into our input 1x the same thing for the right gear so output 1d into input 1x now when we rotate this up and down we should have the treads moving and the wheels and gears separated so that is working exactly how we need it to work in the next video which is the final video we're going to be setting up the turret we're going to be using a double aim constraint setup which is really efficient and it won't allow your turret to flip in any way which is very useful and cool and also a fire attribute so you have an automatic recoil that reacts to whichever way our turret is facing hopefully this tutorial series has been useful to you so far if you're enjoying it please hit the like button and if you would like to see more tutorials like this please subscribe thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video